Today I'm going to biofumigate this high tunnel using mustard cover crops. Come on, let's go. So mustard plants contain a chemical compound and there's like a really scientific name. I tried to pronounce the word like dozens of times and I can't, but I'll put it on the screen for you. When incorporated into the soil, those chemical compounds are released, which will kill and suppress pests and diseases that are living in your soil. It also has benefits such as nutrient scavenging. So it'll scavenge nitrogen from deep down in the soil and bring it up up to the soil surface through the root system. All that nitrogen's already been brought up to the soil surface for the subsequent crop to get a nutrient boost when you plant it. So my intention here, I'm gonna cover crop this whole high tunnel to mustard cover crops. The seed packet says it's like a 35 to 50 day crop, I think, but it's the middle of winter right now, but you can see I'm like in a t-shirt. It is the end of January and we just came out of like a super Arctic blast. I'm sure everybody in the country if you're in the United States just experienced similar weather. So I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee zone 7B. I'm in the middle of a warm spell right now but it's the middle of winter so I'm gonna get this stuff seeded today and hope to get germination this week and then I mean it looks like the next couple of weeks are still pretty warm there. We do have some temperatures going to around freezing but not too far below so I should be able to get these germinated especially since I'm in a high tunnel. It'll be different if I'm doing it in the field but when it gets cold I'll just close up my high tunnel and my cover crop is going to be thriving. So you might notice that what I said in the beginning is that when mustard's incorporated into the soil. So in a typical conventional system, they would come through with a tiller and till it into the soil. Now, even if you're working in a no-till system, but you have like soil-borne pest and disease issues, then this might be a, a one-time tillage type of system, you know, where you grow a mustard cover crop, till it in, and then reform your beds on top of that and then continue on with a no-till system so that you can get the full benefit of the mustard cover crops and I don't think there's anything wrong with that in a no-till system especially if it's a means to an end that would be probably the most recommended way to do this but that's not what I'm gonna do I'm gonna stay true to my no-till roots typically when I grow winter rye cover crops or peas and oats cover crops I'll just crimp it and then use that on as like a mulch on top of the soil. I'm like stepping in my arugula here. <laughs> I don't think that I would get the full benefit out of the mustard um, if I did that because from my understanding it's like the mustard leaves when they're like chewed up through tillage and then broken down in the soil that's what releases those chemical compounds so I believe like the leaves actually have to be chewed up to an extent so the method that I'm gonna go with and I didn't learn this anywhere and I'm just kind of incorporating my own systems into research that I've done so my plan I'm just gonna let it grow till maturity and then I'm just gonna come through with a regular lawn mower and I'm just gonna mow it so that it chews up all the leaves and then just leaves them on the soil surface then I'm just gonna measure up my beds like I typically do in my no-till system so I measure the beds 30 inches wide usually around 14 inch walkways although uh, in high tunnels it gets a little bit weird uh, I always have extra space like so in this high tunnel the extra space is in the middle beds here uh, on my last high tunnel I just built I put more uh, room on the edges so that because you can see how uh, you know you can get some damage because it's so close to the edge so the last high tunnel I did I brought the edge in uh, <laughs> like that you know what I mean a little bit further from the edge so then that way I could put like row covers over it and not have to worry so much about things like leaves of plants touching the plastic um, so I string them up with strings from each end just tied to a piece of wood pounded in the ground and I measure 30 inch wide beds 14 inch walkways and layer compost right on top of the chewed up mustard crop <laughs> sorry I'm always drinking a cup of coffee <laughs> So the plant material like land on the soil surface, right? And then I'm just gonna cover it with more compost. That compost is gonna break down that plant material, which is gonna release those chemicals into the ground, which is hopefully gonna help me suppress pests and disease. And then mustard also has an aleopathic effect, which inhibits seeds from germinating. So you might not wanna follow a direct seeded crop with a mustard cover crop because it might inhibit the seed germination. So what I'm gonna do is once I 
I build those beds, I'll probably paper pot transplant like lettuce or beets down the sides with tomatoes in the middle. So I'll be transplanting all my crops into these beds and the aliopathic effect that certain cover crops can have. It's only gonna last like a few weeks, like probably several weeks, but it doesn't like last forever. It's not like you can never direct seed crops in the bed and you still might be able to direct seed crops in the bed, especially using the method that I'm using, which I'm putting compost on top of it. So it, I don't believe it would have much of an effect, but it could. I'll, I'll definitely do like some updates on how it's going and then the tomatoes going into it. And hopefully at the end, I'll do like one big long video about the mustard cover crop and tomatoes at the end of the year. But I really just wanted to put this information out there for anybody who might be struggling with pest and disease issues in their high tunnels or it doesn't have to be in a high tunnel but it's just so early in the winter right now that it's going to be easier for me to manage the crop in a high tunnel but you could definitely do this same method not in a high tunnel just in your garden i'm going to be planting a lot of other cover crops peas and oats i got a little bit of winter rye so i'll be doing a lot of content about cover cropping this year also just leased a second farm which is my friend's farm who just I'll just say she quit, you know, uh, she didn't want to farm anymore, but it wasn't her farm. She leased it. Uh, so I reached out to that property owner and now he's let me lease that farm. So now I've got two farms, which really is going to give me a great opportunity to do more cover crops at both farms because last year was my second full-time year market gardening so like prior to the first year my whole entire garden has been cover cropped parts of it at times um, but then I quit my job so I needed to make revenue and it just didn't make sense for me to do cover crops last year I did actually do some cover crops but after the winter rye was crimped down in that plot over here in April late April to early May I think um, and I didn't do any more cover crops for the rest of the year and the rest of the garden hasn't been cover cropped in two years. I mean, I could tell it's starting to show signs. It just doesn't look like it has as much life in it as it did when I first started because I had cover cropped the whole garden and uh, you know, there was so much life and organic matter. You could just tell from picking up a handful of soil. So I'm hoping to get back to there and having the new farm is gonna help me do more cover crops at both properties. So pretty excited about that. So. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe for some more no-till cover crop tips. And uh, I'm gonna show you how we uh, seed this using the Jang Seeder. So this is the mustard cover crop. I got it from uh, True Leaf. True Leaf? Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, it might mirror. Um, but it's about, it's a brassica. So it's like the same size as arugula seeds. I don't know if you can see it very good, but. Uh, really tiny seeds they're just really tiny seeds and and then this is my main planting tool which is the jang cedar so i'm just going to direct seed it uh using the jang cedar uh right into these beds and maybe even the pathways too um, if I can get this thing to seed right through the pathways because I'll just I'll just mow it all down and build beds right on top of all of it Okay, so I've got these irrigation lines in here right now. I'll show you I'm just gonna pull the irrigation lines out direct seed the beds um, I might rake them a little bit